little bit about elderflower and why we're here gathering them. Um, they are really powerful medicine, not unlike the elderberry, but elderberries get all the attention. Um, but elderflower has a lot of the same medicinal qualities. You use it for cold, flus, sinus infections, respiratory issues, and it's even actually a laxative. Um, it's the, the properties in the body are it acts as a diaphoretic, so it helps you to sweat, so it's good when addressing fevers. It's a diuretic, so it helps you to urinate. It's a, a vulnerary, so it actually staunches wounds. I put them in salves along with a lot of other plants. Um, but like I said, I've also infused honey with it, so that adds the qualities of the elderflower into the honey, and honey is also a really powerful medicine itself. So you can use them in a lot of ways. They're also just super pretty in teas. Um, so that's how I typically use them. Typically where you're gonna find elder plants, elder flowers, elderberries, is kind of in low-lying kind of waste areas. So this whole area, if you move around, you can see bunches of elder plants. And um, what it used to be was a big pine forest and they logged it. So typically elders thrive where birds have dropped the berry seeds and they just fill in fields on their way to becoming mature woodland. But you'll typically find very weedy plants around them. You'll find blackberries and burdock, different grasses. You've got crown vetch, just kind of like a weed wasteland. Um, poke. I'll, I will generally dress in jeans, even if it's the hottest day of the year, because a lot of times elderflower is blooming May into June, depending on where you live in North America. Um, so I've come on 95 degree days and been in a long sleeve shirt and everything just to prevent getting scratched up, because it is kind of like you gotta wade through the weeds to get to them typically. All right, so there, here, right down from the poison hemlock, we have elderflower, so what we're out here for. I bring um, a cane because I think it's super handy for grabbing the high up ones. <laughs> now that one's not ready, but you can see how it's really useful to bring it to you. Um, but otherwise, so to identify elder, this is the flower. Let me grab a leaflet to show you. So we've got, oh, stuck on some blackberry here. We've got the flower and the leaf. Now the leaves of elder are actually compound. So that means they are comprised of a bunch of different leaflets. Usually it's five to seven. So this is seven. Sometimes though, you're gonna see it like that. So compound meaning one leaf is actually a bunch of little leaflets. They're often toothed. So they have that kind of like toothing <laughs> along the edge. Sometimes a little furryish underneath. Um, and yeah, that's the leaf. And then the flower is the big umbels and there's five petals on each individual flower in the umbels. And it smells pretty fragrant. So, and they're- All right, now I'm back home with my elder flowers and it's time to process them, which really is just for drying them. Um, some people do use them fresh for things like we talked about, but we're going to dry these. Um, most of them I try to fit in my dehydrator, which you can actually hear going right now. We're drying some reishi mushrooms, and stay tuned, we'll have a video on reishi soon. Um, but for now, I'm going to put some on my dryer sheets to dry in the dehydrator. I also put them in baskets. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can use them. But in our house, we don't use air conditioning, and the windows are open, so it's pretty humid, and it takes a lot longer for things to dry that way. I still do it because I have way too many elder flowers to fit in the dehydrator, but sometimes I definitely do shifts. Um, so what I do is I just actually cut off more of the stem once I'm home and lay them on the dehydrator because the stems are not really useful. You just want the flower umbels. Little bits of stem are fine, but you want to reduce the big ones because they do have some, some plant chemicals that you don't want an excess of. Um, so just put them on the dryer sheet like so, cut the top, cut the stems off, and I also find it useful to use cookie sheets if you have those, like the dryer sheets, you can use those, they allow a lot of air. I have a, a plethora of baskets that I've collected from different thrift stores. Just find what you can, get cheap, 
do what you can with what you have. There's no need to get special tools for it. Um, this is a jar of last year's elderflower. They do turn a yellowy color when you dry them, but I think they look nice and aged. My husband says they have a little bit of a patina to them. Um, the smell when they're dried is a little different. It's more reminiscent of kind of a little bit of a honey scent and like that grassy, earthy smell. They're great in teas, so that's what these are going to be used for mostly and tinctureing. But that's, uh, that's the plan, so bring them home. Dry them however you can. Don't get fancy, just use what you have.